ready? Yeah, sure, man. Taka is ready. Okay. How are you? <laughs> it's been a long week, right? Yeah. It has been a long week. So <laughs> this is Friday of SEMA week. And right away, when we came to the show, my guys were telling me, you have to check out Taka's car. You have to check out the A86 build. And now we're here, we're checking it out. And um, you actually haven't been to the SEMA show in a while, huh? Yeah, the last time was 2014, I think. That's been, oh, 10 years. Yeah, 10 years. Yeah, it's been 10 years. So what have you been doing all this time? We are just doing school, teaching people how to drift at the Drift School USA. So you actually run a drift school in Southern California yes. out of Willow Springs. Yes. And um, it's uh, Drift School USA. Yeah. And you have your own cars yes. that people can drive, but yeah. you can also bring your own car. Yes, either you... way works, yeah. So then tell me about this. Is this an old chassis that you've had for a long time? Uh, this chassis, I acquired it in 2015-ish. I had a coupe, but I like touch. And I know the, my friend likes the coupe. He didn't like hutch, so we just exchanged it. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So then, for those of you guys who don't know, Taka is a legendary Formula Drift driver. He started in Formula Drift from the very first event, and he drove over 10 years. And um, he was the last A86 uh, in Formula Drift. And it's just a chassis that you're pretty much known for, and yeah. you've always loved. Mm -hmm. So then, is this like a, your dream build, something that you've always wanted to build? Yeah, you know, the one thing about Formula D is we always chase for the power. So we started with maybe like 150 at the 2004. At the very end, 2014, when I retired, we were pushing like 750. 750 out of a 4AG? Yeah. Oh, no, 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 different, 2AZ. Oh, oh 2AZ, yeah. okay. So, you know, we drove, I drove a lot of different engines in uh, like in 4A, like we did everything in the 4A. Out of that, you know, most fun was actually NA, ITB, A86. You know, like it doesn't go fast like, you know, 500 horsepower car, but the ITB sound and RPM, that is hard to come by. Yeah. Yeah, so then let's talk about the engine. This is the centerpiece of this. You actually built this entire car mm -hmm. at Willow Springs? Well, the, except the engine though, right? Except engine, the engine, okay. I have to ask uh, my teacher of the engine build, the Mr. Howard Watanabe at that Moto IQ. Yeah. Got it, so they actually built the engine? Yeah, long block. But you put everything yes. else together. Yeah. So then tell me about this engine. What's special about this? I see this is all billet. Yeah, this is a, like a JSP special. Yeah, like he used to be Formula D driver with me. Yes. Mm -hmm. in the, the same team. Yeah, John uh, Rusikoff. Yeah, he's yep. a Mr. Fabricator. Then he slowly changed into his shop to CNC machine shop. And uh, he start creating this really beautiful valve cover, functional valve cover and engine mount and the alternator mount, you name it, anything for 4A. Mm -hmm. If you want to make it shiny, these are the one right. that JSP sells it. It's beautiful, yeah. yeah. So then what are we looking at engine-wise? So this is a kind of special engine that, uh, this is the second one, I think, or third one, but the first one in the US that the OS geeking people started with uh, one guy in Japan, Mr. Taniguchi, but not Nob Taniguchi, the other Taniguchi, we call him. Uh, his goal was just try to make it 11,000 RPM in the 4A with the durability. And uh, I was lucky enough in the, when I was in under the Falcon tires and the Formula D, we run with a Formula Atlantic engine from Hasselgren. And uh, we were using Atlantic engine, which grew to 11.8. So 4A, 11.8 RPM, possible, come with a price, especially servicing turbo. So every 24 hours of operation, you have to open it, change the bearings, and change the, all the valve and everything. That was a price of 11.8.
because the uh, 4A engine is not that strong to begin with, especially the block. And that would be a problem for the regular people. Your 24 hours operation meaning, including idle time. That's not just like racing full hour. throttle yeah. racing time. That's just the engine being on. Yes, so imagine in Long Beach, we are in the pit. We don't want to start the engine. We just keep pushing the car. <laughs> <laughs> that was, yeah, too much, right? Yeah. And when I heard that the OS geek can start making something very challenging things for the 4A family engines, which is using the engine called 7A FE, which is a, like the same block, but just like a 1J, 2J, longer block. So it create 1.8 liter. A lot of people go, well, you know, 1.8 liter, but they actually destroke it to make it 1.6 to reduce the side load of the pistons and at the same time, rod angle get better. So instead of the, let's see, combustion force pushing down the piston and if rod is too short, angle too much, it force the piston to go side. To reduce that, you have to make this angle shorter to make it more efficient. And this is the kit. So this is new. Yes, totally This is something new. that they just made it. Made mm -hmm. and created. After all these years, yeah. the 4AG has been around, you know, uh, 30 wow. years. 30 years. <laughs> yeah. And now they're coming out with new stuff for it. Yep. Still, so that's amazing things, right? That is so crazy. Yeah, and that it's called 4A combination of 7A block, so it's 4.7 AG. Ah. So this is stock 4A. Yep. So it's short stroke, mm -hmm. and uh, this one is this kit. Super long lot. You can see how long this thing is, but still 1.6 because they have to make a new crankshaft. And since this thing get bigger, it's a lot stronger, so it doesn't break at 11,000 RPM. At the same time, you can see the bearing size difference on here. It's huge, yeah. yeah. It's a, I think, I believe it's the same size as RB26. What? So it's a lot stronger engine. So idea of them is, you know, to go 11,000 RPM, the block has to be strong. And you can overbuild the bottom end. So it's kind of up to builder to make whatever the cylinder head who makes the power to go, I don't know, 11,000 all the way to power, but or you don't have to. You can build it to 9,000 RPM, knowing there's a plenty of safety behind that. So that's why yeah, I was so interested. So then, uh, what did you have a chance to dyno this? Yes, we dyno it, and uh, it literally led to 11,000. Uh -huh. And I'll be honest with you, like, it's been a long time that uh, I hear that engine sound. And uh, we are dynoing at the apex, and uh, unrivaled tuning guys tuning it. I was sitting on the side. After 9,000, I was going like, uh. Uh, You were getting scared. <laughs> yeah. Sound. Really? Yeah. So 11,000, what kind of power did it make? So this one, right now, we have a little bit issue because the ITV is a little bit too small for the high RPM operation. And uh, you know, like a left-hand drive problem. Yeah. The steering shaft is oh, really tight. Yeah. And uh, I thought this header going to clear that, but uh -huh. it didn't. 
Okay. So, so you actually have to clearance the header a yeah, little bit. Yeah, with the hammer and the torch. Uh, and it was a sad moment. And a brand new one, torch yeah. and the banging. So then what are you going to do to fix that? So we try to not change the links, but try to kind of make the other side room. That's what we are talking about. You so, can't convert it to right-hand drive? Yeah, I don't want to do that. The concept of this car is a street. That's why I have AC. Oh, you have air conditioning. Yeah. Wow. Where's the condenser? Is it here? Right here. Oh, okay. And uh, we have a power steering system too. Oh, it's a true streetcar. Yes. That revs out to 11,000. Yes, that's the idea. So then what's the estimated power that you want to put out of it? So, so far it make about 170 to the wheel at the dyno pack with a, with a correction factor. So it's about 200-ish to the flywheel. Now, we, yeah, now, but with the ITBs and the corrected um, yeah, it, exhaust, or the corrected uh, um, headers, what yeah, do you think it would be? We make? are shooting for maybe 185-ish, 190 to the wheel. And I'm not chasing power. If yeah. I need a power, I can go trouble. Yes. And then no problem. It's about... Um, the uh, response yes and it's about the 11,000 rpm sound. sound yeah the sound yeah. why 11 it wh I don't like know. why like, not 10 5 like is uh, 11 like a special I think the idea when they started it was the initial D things I guess the got it one of the sentence the the father tell the son make sure it rev you rev it to all the way to 11,000 I think that's a keyword thing <laughs> Yeah. And that's okay. Well, it's kind of like very funny way of starting serious build. So then, with all of this updated mm -hmm. kit, it doesn't need to be rebuilt every 24 hours. No. Yeah. It's They're, just reliable. It's reliable. Drive it on the street. Yes. And I know, in fact, that the, under the Falcon, we Falcon tire. We did the NA 11.8. Accidentally, I went to 12.5 in Washington. Downshift a little bit too early. They were not happy, but it was okay. <laughs> 12,500. 12, yeah. It's like an F1 car. <laughs> yeah, and you know, imagine the after run. The engineer guy come up with the long data. Like, what's this? <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't good feel. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, okay. But this one. Because a longer rod, they should take it really long. Yeah. So tell me about the rest of the car. This this yeah. car is actually very very clean. Yeah, a lot of my friends said like, oh, I didn't know you had a clean Corolla. <laughs> yeah. So the yeah Watanabe wheel. Yeah. That he they been my sponsor from the Formula D days. Mm -hmm. They are like nice enough to send a new set. And uh, on the Formula D, we used to run 16 by nines. Mm. And now it's a golden size. We used to call it, I don't know, new days, but 15 by eight and a half, negative six offset. That's a golden number for, we call narrow body, that non widened 86. Yeah. That's the size we have. It looks great. And, uh, you know, like the Corolla people, fat wheel with a skinny tire. It looks so, so at, cool. Uh, 195-50-15. Love it. Love yeah. AO52s, yeah. Yokohama's. Really, really sticky tire. So tell me about the body itself. So the body is painted by the Just Driven, the people who does paint work on the, the, the Fast and Furious Super and those cars. And that they did it with the Toyota 040 white. Mm. And the uh, side skirt is... Uh, from uh, Formula D era, the Japanese company called J-Blood, they used to sponsor me and they, this is a kid. It's cool that after all these years, after 10 years, a lot of your sponsors are still around and they still want to support yeah, you with these be, kind yeah, of builds. Yeah, I really appreciate you know, what they've done to the industry and it's still helping me. So. Yeah. So then, um, what else? Tell me about the hatch. So this one is a new generation, guys, that the... Uh, that they try to create the you know, one of the crystal body Yokohama, the hatch, but it's so expensive to ship it to here. So one guy tried to make it at the house. So 
So he made one, the One Piece fiberglass. One Piece fiberglass, yes. Lexan window. Yeah, Lexan was cut by Yoshie. She wasn't happy that the tool I had, but <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> what, What's amazing to me is how clean the interior is. Like, I can't believe you even have the luggage. <laughs> Where did you get that? Oh, you can still buy brand new at the Toyota. Really? Yeah. Well, but what about all the plastic stuff? No, like you have to have a lot of corrections. So, and even the rear seats yeah. look like they're brand new. Yeah, you have to you know, keep it. They're so clean. I can't believe how clean it is. Yeah. So then there's some things that you've updated, like yeah. the door panels. But did you have to get like all new, like this kind of stuff? You no. know, like the little pieces that make this special. So you know me, right? Like we are in Formula D. So every time we build the chassis, we start with regular car. And I didn't throw them away. I just keep it on side. So I You're a, a hoarder. You're <laughs> yeah. an A86 hoarder. So in Japan, we said, Mottai nai. That means, oh, yeah, you can now discard it. It's like it's still usable, and we just keep it on the side. So I just dig everything what I have, most clean one. Yeah, so, okay, so then you combined all the clean things into one car. Yeah. I mean, like, this is what I mean. Like, these all wear out, you know, <laughs> from the sun. Uh -huh. Even just like yeah. stuff like this, it's, yeah. it's so cool. Like, what about the rubber and, and stuff like that? Yeah. Even the door handles, there's just so many pieces that just kind of turn to dust. Yeah, and those are hard to come by now. So you really have to kind of keep it on the side. And when you find a clean piece, you gotta keep it. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, one of the interesting thing about this setup is we are running, for this car engine, we are running the RX-7 transmissions. Then like a FC? FC. Because uh, you know, OS Geeken has a five-speed cross-ratio gear set. So this is what we have. And uh, this is the actual shift knob that JSP guy made it. That's the whole shifting for me back in 2010. And uh, I had transmission, I have to use it. So usually shifter comes out here. Oh. And when you buy TLD thing, you know, I got, I'm got i fanboy of TLD, so we have to, you know, use the TLD. So that's a just... Yeah. Right. So then this, you, you made this as like a block off plate. Yeah. Right. And uh, oh. for me, I'm short and the TLD parts were made for right hand drive. So shifter point that way. So every time you try to upshift third, it's too far. So we used to use a press to bend it back. And uh, when we try RX-7 transmission, actually, it's right here. You should sit in here. Like, it's like, it's kind of, wow, it's it, like, wow, this is good. It's better yeah. than stock. But also, because this is moved back, yeah. does it affect your seating position or no. anything at all? It's, it's like good. a perfect spot. Yeah. And for the drifting purpose, later on, I'm going to install the hydro here. Oh, and it's going to come out of here? Yeah. Oh, then that's be perfect. perfect. Yeah. Ah. And the uh, only bad thing is I have to bend this one that way. Oh, so <laughs> I see. Yeah. From oh, the no. back, if you see it from the back, this thing is like... Yeah, 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 this, yeah, yeah. Right? I see what you mean. Maybe there's a way you can modify this so yeah, it's the, on the side. Yeah, we used to cut this one, but then I don't want to cut anything out of it. So yeah. we just actually drill the hole and the twist it this way. Yeah. So, because you remember the days when these cars were $500, sometimes they were free. free. Yeah. Sometimes they'll pay you to take yeah. it. Yeah. Not anymore. Not anymore. You see how much these things are yeah. worth and it's just insane. It's insane. Like it, it ter literally 10 times more than what used to be. Yeah. And uh, one of our like school cars, A86, that one actually, you know, my friend called me Hey, you know, there's a car sitting in the shop. You want it? Come t pick it up. It was free car. And that's how it used to be. Not anymore. Yeah. The headliner, I just can't believe all the plastic pieces are still intact. I love it. So some of this stuff is carbon. Yeah. Like who, who made this stuff? So this one, uh, the company called RS Carbon makes it. I'm appreciate it. it's still available, but just 
say, be patient. When you order it, they, they might say six to eight weeks, but not weeks, it's months. Well, it's probably yeah. worth the wait then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then do they make the hood too? This one is, uh, no, like it, uh, we couldn't find a good, good hood and nobody had it. So we just find one company, just sells it. And I think it's similar to D-Max. Mm. And then so what is what dash is it running? So this is a, the AIM. Uh-huh. So and then see. so what, what ECU is this on? This is a Link. Oh, okay. Yeah. Link. Oh. oh. Old photo of you. Yeah. And see? 12,000 RPM. Ah. <laughs> I have to change the scale. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want to, I just want to hear what it sounds like. I, next time I come to Willow Springs, yeah. you got to give me a ride in this thing. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, the sketchy thing is, if you are not wearing helmet, this thing, you hear most of the thing here. You don't hear any exhaust. You, you hear everything here on the ITB sound. Right. Yeah. It's just super loud. Yeah. Intake it's almost like you need earplugs to <laughs> yeah, drive this the, thing. Yeah. That's a like, very interesting. It, it's cool because, you, you're, cause, because you're just running the velocity stacks, it's even louder. There's yeah. no air box. No air box. And, you know, the, for the function purpose, if you're chasing for the power, you should have an induction box designed to increase power. But, you know, I've been through that. It's not power. This is just about uh, driving feeling, yep. driving exactly, enjoyment. Yeah. Huh? And that's the idea. And for the exhaust part too, like an Apex, people are nice enough to yeah. make a custom exhaust. Oh, what, why, why did it have to be custom? So, throughout the hustle when, the, when they did the testing, uh, we find out after the catalytic converter, everything needs to be bigger. And uh, bigger they go, it makes more power, even in A. So we end up asking Apex people to make, let's see, 2.75 the inch diameter pipe is that 70 millimeter exhaust. That's really big for That's a big 86, for a, huh? Yeah. Usually, if, is a 50 mil or 60. So, yeah, less than two inch by, yeah. I, I just, I can't believe how clean this is. Yeah. And Has it driven on the street at all? Well, a couple times, yeah. But, you know, that, that's a sad part about the, this clean car, right? It looks like a brand new car right now. <laughs> yeah. Did you catch the shiny, the, the housing we call C3PO? What's that? Yeah. Where's that? Oh, that's the uh, the plate. pumpkin. Yeah, pumpkin. Oh my God, it looks so nice. We found. Is this. that the? Does it have an OS diff? Yeah, OS diff. C three PO. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> One time we went to junkyard uh -huh. and they find the Celica Supra rear end like this, in gold and plated. It, it was like the whole thing was gold plated. <laughs> <laughs> and you just bought it? Yeah, yeah. You kind of have to. It was yeah. funny, like even disc brake and everything was created. So then, that's what's in here. <laughs> yeah, that's oh, amazing! Here. All of your hoarding paid off. Yeah. After yes, all these yeah. years, and now it's uh, accumulated in one car, yeah. and it's beautiful. I love it. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so and, much. Yeah, and they gotta have this club for you. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, like the throwback. <laughs> Wait, this is a real thing. I this had is it. they made this. Back yeah. then? Yeah. Oh, because this is cannot, not a... You cannot buy this anymore. Right. So this is my old one from 2000, I don't know, three. Wow. Because uh, it continues this line. Yeah. This is the most expensive part. You can buy a new one. Uh -huh. And this one itself, some people sell it like $900. $900 for this little yeah, piece right here? centerpiece, yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay. Yeah, well, thank you so much, world. Saka. Yeah. This car is incredible. Thank I'm you, so Ryan. happy that you built this. Thank it's you. incredible. Yeah, very cool. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to support us directly, go to LarryChenPrints.com. I print and sign every single one of these. This is the perfect gift or it's the perfect piece of art for your wall.